vehicles are coming. We've seen a lot of automakers and non-automakers actually investing in a lot of this technology. We've just seen Uber actually make a huge play for this autonomous technology. They basically raided the Carnegie Mellon campus and took over 50% of their researchers and almost all of their department heads. So this really is an area that's going to be coming sooner rather than later. And the big question is, are we ready? There's a lot of technologies that are coming that are already in the vehicles that will be incorporated into autonomous vehicles. And the fact that they're already in the cars makes going to an autonomous vehicle that much simpler. FCA makes a lot of these systems as well, with things like the automatic distance keeping cruise control is a key component to making this kind of thing work. Electric power steering is something that uh, is going to be required as well, throttle by wire. A lot of these systems that are already appearing in a number of FCA vehicles and throughout the industry are going to be the, the stepping stones and what happens is what we call sensor fusion. When all of these different sensors around the vehicles are able to be tied in with a lot of the electronic control systems, now you've got a vehicle that can do a lot of the things on its own and it simply needs an electronic brain to tell it how and when to do it. But there's still a problem with it in that it doesn't operate in all conditions. When you've got bad weather, driving rain, or when there's snow that covers the roads and you can't actually see the lane markers, autonomous technology doesn't actually work. And this is something that a lot of the companies have even acknowledged. Google has said that they don't really test these vehicles in bad weather and inclement weather. They're usually doing it in ideal conditions. So what this would mean for the incorporation of a lot of those technologies is that you're going to see it in regions first where it can be accommodated. Only a handful of states actually have legalized this kind of uh, activity, have actually put laws into the books governing how these cars can operate, how they can be tested, where they can be driven, and, and the, the rules governing how they work. There isn't much yet out there in terms of who is liable if the car makes a decision to drive up on the curb and injure somebody in order to protect its occupant from an oncoming crash. The car is working as it's supposed to, but somebody still gets injured. Is the driver liable for still being behind the wheel even though they didn't cause the crash? Is the automaker liable for the vehicle because they designed it and they're the ones who've actually built it? Is the guy who wrote the software that determined that the car should go up on the curb instead of hit the oncoming semi, is he or she uh, liable for it? So there's a lot that has to be still considered yet that there are some think tanks that are thinking about it, but if you know anyone who's going into law school, this could be a very big and lucrative area for them in the next few years. Baby steps towards this kind of technology I think are going to be happening first, and you will see people incorporate them in their daily lives a bit more every day. But the question of are people ready to actually take their hands off the wheel, push a button, and tell the car where to go, yes and no. And that's really going to be, I think, where we need to start looking at.